Hello and welcome to the Land Rover Series 1 Club YouTube channel. This video is all about looking around the iconic Series 1. We're going to be talking through some of the unique features of the very early Series 1 Land Rover. I'm Tim and this is Emerus and we're going to start at the front of the vehicle. So first thing to note about a Series 1, this one Dodo is a 1949 and the light should actually be behind the grill. They should be behind the grill, there should be small lights behind the grill. This vehicle has been modified as many Series 1 Land Rovers have been. This is actually a 1951 grill, we call this the lights through. For obvious reasons, the lights come through the grill. Now the lights behind the grill was an early feature. It was modified pretty early in the production run of the Series 1 because they weren't as effective. Obviously shining through the grill, it did take some of the range out. The other thing to note as well on the wings are the addition of these indicators. If you look at very early photographs of a Series 1, you'll see that there are no indicators because they would have been... Trafficators, but yes. So conventional indicators, flashing indicators, sensible feature in modern traffic but originally they would have either had no direction indicators at all, or as Tim rightly says, trafficators, which is an arm that pops off and goes out there. Now, trafficators are quite rare to find on Land Rovers, so it's quite often that you will find indicators, and that's perfectly fine because you actually need these legally now in the UK. If we head around down the side of the Land Rover, this is the easiest way to sell a Series 1 from any other, and it is, of course, a completely flat side. Now, other Land Rovers, you will see that they actually have a bit of a buttress. I refer to it as the David Bache bulge. It's basically the, the Land Rover from 1950. Uh, eight onwards with the Series 2 Land Rover, the designers got onto it and the key lead designer was a chap called David Bache. It's the David Bache bulge. But otherwise the Series 1 you'll see it has a completely flat side. Now unique to Dodo are these red wheels. So if you see a Series 1 out at a show around the UK that's got these red wheels on, chances are it is going to be this very vehicle here. These wheels would have originally been the same colour as the bodywork. Deep bronze Deep green. green. Actually these very early ones, well these would have been a little bit of an a lighter colour yeah. and they went a bit darker following military requests from the police. That, that's correct. The very first Land Rover was 1948 into 1949 were actually a much lighter green uh, but this is what we would think of as a traditional deep bronze green Land Rover which is from late 49 to 1950 they started painting these colours and this colour actually continued on the colour palette all the way through into the mid 1980s. Now another thing to notice which is unique to Dodo uh, is as part of the restoration work though we've restored these wings and they've done such a good job on them that we didn't actually want to drill anything in there but usually we would have found a little door butt stop which is now fitted on the door here uh, purely because this door had actually already got holes drilled in it because this is a slightly later door but as it swings all the way around that butt stops the door and the wing coming into contact with one another. Also to notice there's no door handle on the outside. The series 1 you would have had a little flap through the pass roof due to grab hold of the door handle on the inside. Now if you have a look between the front and rear hubs, the one at the front by me is protruding out whereas one by Emerus is uh, smooth and indented. It is indeed. This is what we would refer to as a semi-floating half shaft. So it's uh, a flat uh, face to it. Basically the bearings uh, for the hub and the half shaft are actually combined. Whereas if we look at the opposite side here, you'll see that you've actually got a stub axle which then comes out to a driving member. Also while we're down here, uh, this down here is the fuel tank. And to fill that in, you actually fill it up underneath the driver. Looking at the back of the vehicle, this is where we've got our bed. Uh, it's actually wider than it is longer, uh, the bed on this, and later iterations of the Series 1, such as the 86 inch and so forth, they're actually the same dimensions from the B pillar forward, but it was all added towards the wheelbase at the back here and on the overhang as well. Uh, while we're at the back, we have got these D-shaped rear lights. 
And you can see that there's been an addition of a indicator here. Again, similar to the front of the Land Rover, they've had to add indicators for legislation reasons, but Carl's done a very good job here of making that a very subtle, nice little addition there. But usually, you would have just had this D-shaped rear light. So that's, that's a lovely, subtle modification. It ties in very, very nicely with it. Another small modification at the back here, you can see these reflectors. These were uh, a requirement in law. There was actually a service bulletin that uh, gave the service department specific places to put these. But obviously, parked up at night, you can imagine the car would be totally invisible until these reflectors are put on. Around the back as well, you can see some of the bodywork. Uh, the bodywork is uh, aluminium. It's Burma Bright. It's an aluminium alloy, which, which is quite hard, strong aluminium alloy. We've also got a uh, silver uh, top. These is actually steel, so you've got steel uh, framing the aluminium body itself. Uh, to open the back, so, and it's not unusual to actually find a bit of scarring where these have been flapping around and so forth. This one's been recently restored. So it is looking lovely, shiny and bright. Uh, you can see as well in the back of the bed, uh, we've got two wheel arches which actually act as a uh, place to sit. You could pretty much put whatever you want to the back here, I you? you could put uh, bales of hay, sheep, people, beer, cider. Beer, yes, 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 yes. Also around the back as well, it's worth having a look at this uh, here. Now on early series ones, this was welded into the chassis, but it was later adapted to actually be bolted onto the chassis following requests from farmers and also the military where they found that when they were driving along this could act as a bit of a snow cone actually get a bit stuck. Uh, it has got two handles on the back and if you had troops who are a bit stronger than me and Emrys uh, they would actually be able to just lift it out but unfortunately we're not that strong. Also down here it's worth having a quick look under uh, you've got the exhaust pipe down here running straight from the engine. Uh, there's a heat shield on top there and that is purely to deflect the heat away from the cab there's not much space between there and there's not actually that much material either so if you didn't have that heat chill the passenger would get lovely toasty feet just another quick feature that we can see from the side here is a lockable lid on this side we've got the fuel box on the opposite side we've got access to the fuel tank and in another video on the channel we actually go through a good basic kit of tools to keep in your series one land road for if you're heading off on the road uh, if you're heading off road though yes. one of the best features of the series one is the doors which can very easily be removed uh, although this looks well today you think well what on earth is the point in that if you were using this vehicle back in the day for agricultural use or military use you were getting in and out of the vehicle a lot the last thing you want is constantly door open flat and correct inside the series one land rover well it's a very basic affair uh, we've got three pedals if you look very quickly it looks like there's only two and in fact a lot of people when they come to the series one think there are only two pedals but there is a third the accelerator pedal is this small uh, silver pedal just down here and then you've got your typical clutch and brake in the center uh, steering wheel controls are as you would expect this is the controls actually for the window wipers they're located right on the motor that drives the window wipers themselves uh, you've got a four speed gearbox and then you've got the addition of this red lever here which is of course a low range box uh, red handle uh, links to the red plaque on there which gives you the instructions for that this is a permanent four-wheel drive vehicle the early 80 inch land rovers were permanent four-wheel drive so when you're on the power four wheels drive the vehicle when you back off the power it actually goes into a free wheel mode so it's no longer in four-wheel drive it's two-wheel drive however when we come to reverse, we've got to engage the freewheel lock, which on this vehicle is a little ring pull which pokes up through the floor panel. Yes, there's been quite a few instances with early Land Rovers, Series 1 Land Rovers, where the owners got themselves stuck, got themselves in a bit of trouble, hit reverse, and of course the rear wheels have spun up and you haven't been able to go anywhere, pull that and all four wheels are engaged, and you get it yourself out of trouble. Apart from that, it's a very basic cluster in the centre. You've got amp meter, petrol gauge and speedometer, and you've also got a bar that runs across here. Uh, you can get accessories like this now, which are great for, you know, adding a couple of mod cons if you want to keep things safe, you know, charge your phone and so forth. Uh, this bar across there is quite aptly known as the Jesus bar. I'm sure you can work that one in. So let's have a look under the bonnet. Now this one's got a spare wheel on the bonnet itself, which does make the bonnet quite heavy. 
But underneath, we've got the standard 1.6 litre petrol engine. Yep, 1.6 litre petrol engine. We refer to this as an IOE engine, so that's inlet over exhaust. So our inlet valves are in the head of the engine and the exhaust valves are actually in the top of the block over here. Sometimes we call this a semi-side valve engine. And this one you can tell it's 1.6 because this is cast oil filler. Cast and, oil filler. and there's no open vent on the top of the rocker cover. There are your key features to be looking for to see if you're looking at Series 1 or considering Series 1 to see if the engine is original. Uh, one of the things to note on this one here is obviously the electrics do look quite modern. The owner's father of this vehicle actually rewired this. He was an electrician by trade and did a fantastic job of rewiring this vehicle. So it's a very good job there. Don't be surprised if vehicles have been rewired, but do expect to have a few electrical gremlins if anyone less than professional has done it. Indeed. But apart from that, it is a very basic, simple vehicle, as you would expect for uh, the early Land Rover Series 1. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If there's any particular details that you'd like us to go into in more detail, please do let us know in the comments. Make sure you hit subscribe on our YouTube channel as there's loads more content coming up, including workshop how-tos and basic checks to make on your vehicle. Thank you very much for watching this video. We'll see you again soon.